be able to buy PS5 games on your PC and vice versa. Google and Epic are settling outside of court and AMD making the best chip yet. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. This Thursday, November 6, 2025, we're gonna start off today with reports that are coming out that a PlayStation slash PC cross-buy system might be coming out to both uh, console PC things. So this is being found in some code that's in the PlayStation Network store showing that there might be little indicators showing that if you get this game, you can also potentially get it on PC, making it so that you have a two for one deal where, you know, this is something that's typically happening on Xbox, where if you buy it on the Xbox store, as long as it's available on PC, you do get it there too. And it looks like Sony might be moving forward with that idea here as well. Certain game developers have made this happen for various different games, but they require some complex workaround. But now it looks like it's just natively there. So you'll be able to use your keyboard and mouse instead of a controller. But let me ask you something. Have you ever used a nice keyboard? Because I gotta tell you, tippy typing on a nice board does actually make a difference. And today's sponsor, Keychron, knows a thing or two about quality keyboards. Keychron might be known for that iconic reddish orange escape key, but they've been cooking up much, much more. Recently, we looked at the Q16HE all ceramic keyboard. Not only does this board look sleek, but the Hall Effect switches offer features that, that regular mechanical keyboards could only dream of that will certainly give you a leg up in your gaming. The Q16 is currently open for backing on Kickstarter. But if you need a keyboard without the weight, Keychron also has plenty of fully built or bare bones kits for you to choose from. Even low profile boards or compact layouts with nice wooden accents. Grab your next keyboard, keyboard accessory, or even your next mouse from Keychron. Check them out in the description below. Thanks to Keychron for sponsoring. But while you're getting more uh, keyboard functionality with PlayStation games, it also looks like they're updating what's going on with the PlayStation Portal, also known as the Dad Station, that thing that would only let you remote play from a PlayStation console will now allow you to stream PS5 games directly to the handheld, which is a big upgrade from where it was at launch. You do need a PS Plus subscription in order to be able to do it, but you don't need a PlayStation anymore in order to make sure that you can play games on the portal. So unlocking it, untethering it a little bit, still requiring a decent internet connection to get it done, but the dad station getting better as the days and days go on. And Google did not want the days to drag on with the Epic Games lawsuit that was happening. There's been a lot of different conclusions to this lawsuit over the past few months with Google losing most of them and making it so that they would have to follow a certain set of rules laid out by a judge. But now thanks to the settlement that's happening outside the courts, Google only has to abide by certain select measurements, ones that they are personally agreeing to. And so it happens to be that they're getting kind of what they want while also giving up a little bit, which is allowing developers and users to seamlessly use alternative payment mechanisms. But with with them still getting a cut between 9 and 20%. Additionally, with them having reasonable neutral criteria that would make it so that these external app stores can follow various security and privacy guidelines, which is what Google has been arguing is the problem with third party stuff. And Epic is saying you're taking too much money. And now this looks like to be a little compromise on both sides. The judge still has to approve it, but it looks like that's going to be resolved. And what's not being resolved is just how much money is going to be spent on AI because new reports are coming out that it's not just the chips that are expensive, but it's also the cooling itself, with reports indicating that just the cooling system, the bill of materials for a single Blackwell Ultra Rack costs nearly $50,000, and the next generation ones are expected to cost 17% more, coming in at $55,000. It's just a lot of money to get this stuff cooled, not to mention the amount of electricity that's required in order to cool these chips on top of powering them, but there's some research coming out indicating that there might be a breakthrough in that with membrane cooling that can give you 800 watts of heat flux per square centimeter thanks to engineers from the University of California, San Diego, making it so that there's a different way of evaporating liquid in this liquid cooling situation using membranes and microchannels and making it more effective and potentially hopefully more cost effective in the future. But speaking of cost effectivity, that's Reese's whole bag. Let's see what he's got for you today. Yo, welcome back to UFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals 
down the internet and hey, here's your first deal of the day. Starting off with the Asus ROG Strix LC2. This 240mm ARGB AIO CPU liquid cooler is going for $63.99, making it $56 off. But then next up, we have the Corsair RM850e. This fully modular 850 watt ADX power supply is going for $114.99, making it $50 off. And then pre builds don't get a lot of love here usually, but the CyberPower PC Gamer Supreme, which sounds like a Taco Bell menu item, currently has an AMD Ryzen 7 8700F, 32 gigs of DDR5, which is gold at this point, an AMD Radeon RX 7800 XT, a 2TB SSD, all for only $839, making it $560 off. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, man, you're back to... He's gone. He's loose. Well, Reese, I'm gonna need that money you just saved me in order to pick one of these bad boys up. Probably won't, probably uh, will uh, just suffer without it, but the One X Player One X Fly Apex, the handheld with a Strix Halo chip, has had its pricing announced and its Indiegogo campaign is getting ready to launch in just about three days, making it so that you can spend a minimum of $1,400 on the AI Max 385, or you could spend a maximum of $2,300 on the AI Max Plus 395 with 128 gigabytes of RAM, but liquid cool. That's the big neat thing about the One X Fly Apex is that it does indeed have a liquid cool setup, which only costs $60 more than the non-liquid cooled version. I'm interested in this. I have, I think, Michael trying to reach out to get us a, a review sample so that we could check this thing out. We haven't had the pleasure of messing around with any of the One X player devices, but this uh, this could be a good start for us. But that's not the only liquid cooled Strix Halo device that's hitting the market that I'm also interested in. Abby is introducing an AI station that has liquid cooling, but the big deal here is that this little tower allows you to get up to 176 watts of performance, whereas a traditional Strix Halo AI Max Plus 395 can go up to 120. It truly looks to be like a funky, cool little workstation that you stick on your desk. It also has plenty of IO with a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port and a 10 gig ethernet port, HDMI display port, USB 4, two three and a half millimeter audio jacks, has a 400 watt power supply, Wi-Fi 7, Bluetooth 5.4. The only problem is that it looks like it's gonna be a China exclusive situation, which bums me out a little bit. But while we're on the topic of AMD CPUs, we're getting reports of various different X3D CPUs that should be hitting the market soon, thanks to leaked benchmarks coming out for a 97 X3D, which is different than previous rumors, which indicated we were getting a 9850X3D. So it's not quite clear how this falls into the lineup of what that would look like. The 9850X3D allegedly is still happening. Maybe the 9700X3D is gonna have significantly less megahertz. It's gonna be a slower clock speed, or it might be OEM only, whereas the 9850X3D would be the one that goes out to DIY people. It's not quite clear how this would work because effectively a 9700X3D and a 9850X3D would occupy occupy roughly the same market in terms of how much gaming power they're going to unlock and the only difference would be price point. A lot of people would just likely just switch down to the cheaper one. So I'm curious how that would work out, but that's not the only one. We're also hearing reports of the 7500X3D, which is going to be a 7600X3D with slower clocks, 100 megahertz slower. So a very similar situation where you're getting a chip that hopefully is accessible to PC builders, but is affordable and very good at gaming. But that's not the only only AMD chip we're hearing reports of. This one gets me all hot and bothered because yes, while a Strix Halo chip is fantastic, you know, that's exactly what I have in this tablet here, the AI Max Plus 395. It's not quite as good at gaming as you would expect because it has the 16 core problem where, you know, you can't necessarily use all of them at the same time. Whereas the AI Max Plus 388 is looking to address that. So there's already the 385 that's on the market, but the AI Max Plus 388 would have eight core like the 385, but have the fully unlocked 40 compute unit 8060S, whereas the 385 only has the 8050S with 32 compute units. So it would essentially make this a more gaming oriented APU where the price would come down. You're not spending as much on the CPU side. You likely wouldn't get the 128 gigabyte of RAM versions, but rather 32 or 64, making it more cost affordable. And considering this thing goes toe to toe with 3060, 4060 GPUs out, out there, it would make it so that the low end market is just gonna get saturated by these various chips, which honestly, 
I'm very excited for. I wanna see more and more of these handheld tablets coming out. So the 388 is the one I'm excited about. There's also the reports of a 392 that could be hitting the market, which would be a 12 core, 24 thread version. Again, with that full 40 compute unit GPU. It'd be nice to see something like this make its way into a gaming handheld using less of the power budget towards the CPU, more towards the GPU, or even just being able to drop the power budget overall while still giving the same exact gaming experience could make it for better battery life on very various different gaming handhelds. I'm in love with AMD's APUs. They have me smitten. I really like them. And uh, having more options on that with something like the 388 or the 392, preferably the 388. Honestly, I, I, could, I could be talked into getting like a 378 where it's six cores, 12 threads, and then still the 8060S GPU. I would uh, I would pick one of those bad boys up. But I'm not gonna pick up any more news in this episode because I'm gonna go out of here and I'll see you back here for more of what we do here tomorrow or the next day. We'll see.